Brenda Msangi and I am the Chief Executive Officer at CCBRT. So CCBRT, uh, this year actually is our 25th year. We started in 1994 and when we started it was really more of a, a community-based uh, program, finding the blind, those who needed cataracts um, surgery so that we can restore sight. So after that, we um, 2000, we were given a, a plot of land uh, here at Msasani, where we are now, to build a hospital by the government. 2001, this hospital, main hospital, was opened. So since then, we've been changing um, many, many, many lives in Tanzania. Not only the patients that we see, but the, their community uh, as a whole. So last year, uh, late last year, we started, um, actually 2009, we started um, seeing private patients. And the whole idea for private patients was how can they help us to generate income to be able to subsidize those who cannot afford to pay for a service. Because CCBRT, our mission really is to find and to provide access uh, to those who cannot afford to pay. So we provide free services for those who are under five, children who are under five, uh, and really subsidized specialized services so that people can be able to access them. Um, we've expanded our private clinic. So now we have a, a very beautiful, fancy um, private clinic where we have a different range of uh, services, including ophthalmology, orthopedics, line, uh, and different really other services in order to um, encourage those with uh, insurance and those who can afford to pay at a premium uh, so that we can continue providing services for those who cannot afford to pay. So how did I find myself in this healthcare industry? For me, um, my passion really has always been to, to serve, serve and inspire. So I think in, uh, since at a very early stage in life, um, my ambition was never to become a CEO, but it was to be able to influence um, and that's where leadership comes. So for me, um, I was fortunate enough uh, to start at a very young age, um, at the age of 21, in 2001, see, giving up my age already, um, I started working in, um, as a healthcare assistant. And uh, I was working at a, at, a, at a pharmacy, which was in, um, within the, the a supermarket. But really my first job, that's where my humble beginning started, was working at a, as a teller at a supermarket. But my aim was to really to get into that pharmacy to work as a healthcare assistant. That time I was doing my master's degree, my first master's, and um, they didn't have any opportunity. Um, this was in the UK. I was the Tanzanian, the African, and uh, you know those opportunities were not necessarily there for us. So because I couldn't get into the pharmacy, I thought, okay, how can I find other means to get myself into the pharmacy? They had um, a vacancy at a tell at a as a, as a teller, so I become I I started working um, as a as a teller. So again, my point of serving and inspiring started then because I was providing the best customer service you can think of to the point where customers were bringing me presents. So the manager started realizing there were a lot of you know gifts and cards coming from somebody called Brenda. Um, because by then I was wearing my name badge, of course, so uh, customers used to know that I'm called Brenda. So my, the manager back then called me and said, um, you know, I wanted to meet you because I've heard so much about you. Um, you know, you've been getting biscuits and, uh, uh, and whatsoever from, from customers. So I wanted to, to meet the, 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 the face behind, uh, behind the name. And he said, you know, in, in, whenever you need anything, just let me know. I said, oh, great that you've mentioned that. I actually want to work in the pharmacy. Believe it or not, uh, there was space for me in the pharmacy. So that's how I got myself into the healthcare industry. Back then I was uh, doing masters in pharmacy. So I became a pharmacist and I, I get to register and practice as a pharmacist. Uh, my first leadership role was actually um, being a pharmacist manager. So not only I was practicing as a pharmacist, but I was also managing uh, 
branch, um, a Lloyd's uh, branch back in, in, in Worthing. This is in southern uh, England. So I was a young manager. Um, imagine my first kind of like proper job and I was managing a team. Uh, it was a, less, a team of less than 10 people, but I was the youngest. Uh, and the reason why I'm sharing this is sometimes, you know, people think that the, for you to become a leader, you know, there are certain boxes that you had to tick. Uh, there's a lot of myths and misconceptions about who can become a leader. So uh, to cut the story short, from Sainsbury's to Lloyd's Pharmacy, uh, working as a pharmacist manager, I then joined CCBRT. And uh, when I joined CCBRT, this was 10 years ago. I was the, uh, I joined as a deputy director of community programs. Um, not long after that, I was uh, promoted to become uh, the director of community programs. And this was because by then the director of community programs thought I was ready for the role. Now, as I share my story, there are three things that will come very consistent. And this is commitment, perseverance, and consistency. Every time, I reflect back on my journey because after that role of director of community programs, I then became a deputy director of the disability hospital, then the director of the disability hospital, uh, then there was some restructuring, then I became the chief operating officer until um, recently where I was appointed to be the chief executive officer. So throughout my journey, it was really about those three things. I was committed, I was very perseverance and I really was consistent and the reason I'm sharing is that people think it's magic no it's actually a process um, when you see leaders they just don't happen to be leaders it's somehow they were committed in what they were doing and they persevered quite a lot of barriers and challenges across their journey and they remain consistent because it's just not something you do today and then you expect you know some miracle will happen no you need to be consistent in, in your journey some of the barriers um, I faced as Brenda um, there's nothing really shout out as a barrier I think I was very fortunate that um, I did not come across things that I perceived that really took me back and I think um, what helped me to get where I am and cross those barriers is because at a very young age, um, I, my mental maps as I was being raised as Brenda, my parents did, did not show me anyhow that I can not be able, I won't be able to do anything. Um, and the fact that I'm a girl, I was a girl child and I'm still a girl child who's learning, there was no point in time that I was made um, aware or think that because I'm a girl child, um, I cannot do certain things. And I'm very grateful to, uh, to my parents because that's where my confidence, that's where my ambitious of be, to persevere things, um, I think, came from. Um, because there's so many, um, there's a girl child out there who's, who has a completely different mental map. Um, you know, the role of a girl in the community or in, in the corporate world or non-corporate world is completely different. Um, there's uh, areas whereby a girl is um, uh, raised in a certain way. So for me, I have to say that um, I was fortunate enough to be raised in a, in a way that, to me, being a, a female was not any barrier at all. But I have my challenges that I face, of course, being a female leader. And one thing that is very, profound for me is to really juggle because I'm not only um, a CEO, I, I am a wife uh, and I'm a mother, um, I'm a daughter, you know, I'm a sister. So all those things, they comes with responsibilities and expectations. I'm raising three beautiful girls, uh, very strong character. I mean, I have a strong leader, I have a strong entertainer and I have a strong intellect. So you can imagine those, these three characters for them, I'm just a mother. So all this business of being a CEO, you know, for them is, to me, when I get home, I'm a wife and a mother. Now, 
also i have to talk about compromises there's a lot of things that you have to compromise along the journey you know there there's certain um, areas whereby um, I'm al- I have to attend maybe a late event um, through work and uh, I have to sometimes decline because I'm also a mother you know I have to get home and see if the homework was done and so on and so forth um, or sometimes I have to uh, um, not be able to attend maybe certain events at school because I have work commitments so us as female leaders uh, we always have to juggle um, and, and at a given time, you have to select a certain hat that you're wearing and you need to be um, okay with that, you know. Uh, and for me, if I, I, I'm not perfect, but it's just trying to balance, do the balance act constantly. So uh, what helps me as well is to really have a good support system that helps me to juggle because I know I cannot do it on my own. So I'm very grateful. I have a very supported husband, but also my children and my, my girls, they know that mommy has a very demanding job. So they're also playing their role to support me. Um, I created my own support system, you know, where on Saturday I have uh, a Sokoni guy that I can go and, and just they know what Brenda orders on, on a Saturday. I have a butcher guy who knows, you know, what kind of beat I get. So all that is part of a support system because really we cannot do it and it's okay so for me um, the advice that I'll give to the upcoming um, generation of female leaders um, I want to tell them first of all they they need to understand and they need to know who they are and they have to know that it's a process it's a process they should not rush the process because during that process there's a lot of learnings and sometimes I see there's a lot of influence, let's say, on social media where they see somebody and they think um, that somebody just got there within a flash of light. No, they also had their journey and they should not want to be like them. They should be inspired by them. But each girl child will have their own story. So for them is how can they invest in themselves? Because the biggest investment that they can make is themselves once they invest in themselves and then they should know that it is a process and then they should be committed they should persevere because it's not going to be easy there will be a lot of storms that will come their way whether at a personal note or at work uh, but they should know it is part of the process to build them perseverance because they will have to have a thick skin and at the end of the day they have to be consistent they should know that they should be able to continuously build on themselves, um, invest in themselves, learn so that they can move from one stage to the other. And leadership is really not about a title because sometimes people say, you know, I want to be a CEO. What does that even mean? Whatever role you play, make sure that you inspire and you influence. Right? Because once you start inspiring, people will start listening to you. People will start being interesting, inter- interested in what you, you, you have to say or what you have to offer. So people should not think leadership is about a title. At any particular role you play right now, you can be influential and you can be inspiring. So that is the my two cents to the female leaders that are coming. CV People Africa Initiative.